everybody, my name is Sandra Kelly and I am the Visual Arts and Education Manager in Gertrude Lane Arts Centre and today I will be in conversation with Laura James. Laura was to have an exhibition with us here in Gertrude Lane um, as part of this year's Imagine Festival but due to COVID restrictions that has been postponed to 2021. So we will start our conversation with Laura now um, and I hope you enjoy. So Laura, I'm just wondering if you would like to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became an artist. Sure. Well, I'm Laura James and I started in school. I started when I started college, I started for graphic design and I was really interested in going down that path. And um, it was before there was all the computer. It was very much by hand, very technical, very um, you know, hand lettering. I worked at a magazine and it was, you know, hand putting on the letters. And um, I know I'm probably telling my age, but um, so that was really interesting. But then I got into the painting classes and that's really where my passion lies is in painting. So that's really kind of how I made the switch. Um, when I got out of school, actually, I went into various fields, marketing and different fields, and just really did art on the side until 2009. And um, then I, I opened up a business and really started promoting my art, doing a couple shows and getting out like that. That's really good. And whereabouts are you based, Laura? I'm in Dunedin, Florida, which is just outside of Tampa, Florida. We're on the West Coast. Um, I am originally actually from Texas, and so I've been here for about 20 years. And you say that you've been really kind of promoting your work since 2009. So I'm interested in how your practice might have changed in that time. Um, dramatically, thankfully. Um, when I started, I had all this work, I had, a, I had a body of work that was very diverse, um, all sizes, all shapes. So when I did my first festival show, in my mind, I had to show anyone who came by everything I had ever done. So I had my whole little tent area was just packed corner to corner. And um, when the judge came around, he was like, well, you really have a lot to look at. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> and so I realized that that you don't have to show everything all the time. So that really helped me to kind of back off and not panic and not think this is the only time people are will have a chance to see any of my work. So since then, I don't really do the um, the outdoor festivals much anymore. Um, when I started, I had a small studio space in my home, and then I went to a commercial space with another artist, and, um, and that was great. We had great collaboration. It was wonderful working with other artists so closely, but um, an opportunity came up to have my own studio with a gallery. So since then, um, about three years ago, I opened my own gallery and studio, and I've since expanded my studio, and that's kind of where I'm at today. And how do you find having an independent studio to yourself? Do you miss having conversations with other artists or do you enjoy the fact that you can make these works and then see them in the gallery space for reflection? Um, both actually. I, I miss, I'm very good friends with the person that I was in with, so we had really good discussion and um, conversation but um, I really prefer kind of working alone I like my music loud my iPod you know everything kind of my own space without interruption I, I work best that way but I certainly when I'm working on something I I take pictures I show it you know we talk amongst ourselves so I still get that collaborative feeling so I'm not so isolated I have you know, a myriad of artist friends here. So I'm, I'm very rich in that. I love, you know, I have a lot to pull from as far as friends. And I'm just wondering, how would you describe your body of work? 
Um, my body of work has changed so much since the beginning. When I first started, I was really doing more um, like portraits and more realistic, um, a little bit of impressionist work. And um, I worked, you know, some large scale, some small scale, but little tiny details, little tiny brushes. And um, I've really moved away from that somewhat. I, am, I have an example of it actually, so you can see the difference. This is an earlier work. And you can see the little tiniest details. And um, I was working on it in a class actually. Um, and my, it was a class where it was a free, it was free studio time. So you worked on whatever you wanted to, and then you could, you know, everyone walked around and critiqued and we had an instructor. And um, one day after me going crazy with this thing for weeks, he walked up to me and he said, please put down the little tiny brush and pick up a big brush. <laughs> and um, it really, it struck me as so freeing. And um, so I've really changed since then and gone more toward abstract action painting, um, a lot of bold marks, pouring. I do a lot of pouring, which I love. I love the layering and how it's so organic and it makes its own thing. You know, you never really know exactly what you're going to get. Um, and I love that, all those happy accidents. Um, this is my more current work, as you can see. And, um, you know, you can just see the difference in style. Um, I find this type of work much more expressive and freeing. And I think it's more engaging to look at. It's not so still. You, I, it kind of makes my viewers wonder a little bit as to, you know, what's going on here? What's, what's this person going through? And do you think moving forward with your practice, you're going to stick with abstract or do you envision any other changes within your practice? Well, I do a lot of, of just abstract with no figures, but I'm really, I find myself now moving more, I'm adding more figures, I'm adding more structure along with it. So you have a little mixture of both. And I find that to be, for me, a really powerful tool right now. Um, I started that after I had been on a museum trip to New York and um, I just really was studying the figures and how, they're so bold and they say so much. And I just kind of in my mind thought, well, what if I took the figure and I made it more of a, almost so simplified as to be like a wood stamp, just very simple, um, not a lot of dimension, but I put it on a really intricately developed background. And that, I think, that play really played with importance for me. Like what's the most important, is it, the figure, is it the background? And it's kind of a look into us. We think that we are the most important, but sometimes if we look around, we realize that we are not the most important. Our surroundings are the most important. So I kind of wanted to play off of that. And I had a show of that last, last fall, actually, and I'm kind of still on that path a little bit. That's really interesting um, that you say it's about the environment because when your work is in a gallery setting, is there anything in particular that you hope for your audience to take away from viewing your work? There is. Um, what I want most, I guess, is for people to just stop a minute. The world has gotten really crazy and really stressful. And when people come in, I really want them to just kind of dive in and see the details because a lot of my details are kind of obscured somewhat. So I really want to encourage people to just kind of take it in and maybe, maybe it is your thing, maybe it's not your thing, but hopefully you can appreciate the moment you have to experience it. And I seem to get a lot of feedback and I, that is what I'm really looking for. I'm looking for the conversation. What does this say to you? What, do you think I'm saying, which is really great fun a lot of times, but um, that's really, I want them to just experience that moment of something different. It can be the intrinsic beauty of art. It can just be beautiful because it's beautiful, or it can be like, that's disturbing, 
but just feel something when you look at something outside of yourself. And a final question that I always love to ask when I speak with an artist, um, is there any advice that you would give to emerging or up and coming artists uh, that you wish you'd been told when you started out on your creative journey? Yes, don't, don't ever think it's too late. You're not too old. You're not too far down another career path. Just do it because you love it. Don't feel like, oh, if I don't sell anything, then I'm not a good artist. Don't just keep going down your path. Keep working your skill, honing your craft and, and give yourself a moment to find who you are and what you have to say. Don't rush to judgment on yourself. And when you're talking to yourself, like we all do, be kind. Just be kind. Be kind to yourself. Don't give yourself such a hard time about everything. Don't be your worst critic. Um, and accept the help of others. And if you do find a little bit of, of success, be generous with your help to people who are just getting started out. Because I was just unbelievably blessed with artists who had who are successful who really took me in and taught me just the importance of taking your time getting to know your craft and help they helped me and directed me so much more than I could have learned on my own so much quicker so that would be my advice that's really wonderful and lovely advice um thank you so much Laura and if you are interested in taking part in a live Q&A with Laura, uh, all information can be found in gartrelane.ie and we are hoping to have that live Zoom on October 23rd. So please make sure to keep an eye on gartrelane.ie for further information on our live uh, Q&A with Laura.